Hi, I'm Paul from DIY Automate. We're in the middle of a beginner series for Home Assistant. And so far we've done installing Raspberry N, and then we went and installed Home Assistant on that Raspberry N. Uh, we looked at the configuration.yaml file and we have done some component understanding or the understanding of components. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at entities and customizing those entities. Um, giving them names and things like that. And if none of that makes sense, that's fine, because we're going to explain it right now. So we're going to talk about entities, right? And the reason we're talking about entities right now is because an entity is really anything that you can control and interact with within Home Assistant, right? And the reason that's important and why we're doing it now is because I really believe that when we're talking about home automation, as much as automation, we're talking about um, consolidated control environments, right? So, excuse me, having your lights and your music and your weather reports and everything all in one place to be able to be controlled in one place um, instead of all of these different um, applications, right? So automation is great. You walk in, it sees it, you walk in, it turns on a light. But there's a lot of times you just want to do those things without, you know, predetermined automations. And, and that's kind of one of the strengths of putting it all in one place is being able to control them all at once. So as we look at entities, if you look at where we left off before, which is we added Hue lights, we added Sono speakers, and we added um, weather underground weather reporting. And you may have added some other things depending on what you have. But an entity, all of these individual items are entities, right? The speakers are entities, each light is an entity, the groups that the light is in is an entity, um, each weather piece is an entity. Can I say entity anymore? I probably could, entity, yeah I can. Um, so in order to see entities within Home Assistant, just go over to the developer's tools and click on this little states icon, which is the greater than, less than um, thing. And it'll actually show you all of the entities that you have. It'll show you the entity that you have, the state that it's in, and Home Assistant has a state engine that keeps track of all of this, um, and the attributes that can be interacted with, with a, within the entity itself, right? And some of the attributes you want to be able to interact with, some of them are just informational. Um, and up on top, you'll see the entity ID, state, and state attributes. And we can change what the entities look like to Home Assistant from this screen. It won't actually change the entity, it won't turn the light on or off, but if you wanted to test automations, which we'll do later, you can sort of do it right from here. But that's, we'll get to that in a little bit. For right now, the thing you really need to know is this entity name right here, okay? Um, so if we go down, just to make one that's fairly obvious, let's go down to um, sensor PWS underscore dew point Fahrenheit or underscore F, right? If we come and look at our actual states, we can see that right here, right? So that is PWS dew point. If we just read that out, it would say dew point Fahrenheit um, there. And if you click on it, you'll actually see a lot of the um, the entity name. You'll see you know when it was updated and things like that. And you can click on on different entities here and get different information, right? And all of that information is pretty much what you're seeing right here. And as we go through more videos, we will cover entities more and more as we have more things to configure. But right now, I really just want to show you how to make things look a little bit better and make it a little bit easier to interact with and sort of introduce you to the concept. So here's the entity. And one of the things that we're going to deal with within the entity is called is what's called the friendly name, right? Um, and you can see all of these have a friendly name. And most of the time, the friendly name by default is the friendly name that is um, part of the entity name itself. We're going to change that. So let's start changing it. Yeah. So entities can be customized um, within the um, Home Assistant component within the configuration.yaml file. We've covered this before. The actual, the Home Assistant is the only component that you actually have to have, um, but it's there on the top and it's the one that has the name and the latitude, the longitude. Um, and there is um, a, um, a set of um, commands we can put in there to actually override entity values. And that is custom customize, okay? So what you basically do is type customize. Um, 
with a colon. Remember GM also, there's two spaces here. Um, home assistant is the component, it's left justified. And then we're gonna go in two spaces. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna type two more spaces underneath customize. And we are going to um, type in the name of the thing or the entity that we want to customize. And to get that, we just go back again right here and we're gonna look at sensor pws.alert. That'll be the first one that we that we sort of do just to just for an example. So grab that, come back here, paste that in, colon again. If you don't have the colon, it won't work. And there's and then two more. So we're indenting, indenting, indenting. That's how YAML works. Um, and what we're gonna give this one is a friendly name. There's a lot of different things that we could do here. We could do hidden, right, and hide it or show it depending on what we wanna do. Um, we can give it a picture and we'll go through some of that stuff later. But for right now, we're just gonna deal with friendly names to give you an idea how all this works. Um, and if you want more before we cover it, you can just go to the Home Assistant customization page, um, help file, and it'll, it'll walk you through it. And I'll put a link of that down below. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and type in friendly and I never spell friendly, right? So friendly name, right? Friendly underscore name, just like that, colon. And then we're gonna do um, the word alerts. And that's it, enter. Um, and then you can save the file. Uh, and as is best practice for us, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to check our config and it'll take it a second. It'll read that config, make sure that everything that we um, want to have is right and we didn't mistype something or put a forget a colon or whatever. Um, once that's happening, um, you can go ahead and restart the service. And again, you, there's different ways to do this, especially to restart the service. You can just restart the config. You can do it from the website. I just find it's easier to have the screen up, have the commands in there um, and just go through it really quick, especially if I'm making a lot of changes over and over rather than clicking in and out of things. Um, so it'll take it a second to, to restart. And then we will go to our home assistant again, um, and we will go to state. And you will see, once this comes back, it'll take it a second. You can see um, alerts is now alerts instead of PWS underscore whatever. So let's, let's do another one. Um, and you can see that all of these are. So let's do a light and let's do bedroom and we'll change it to something something different. So in order to do that, the first thing we do is we go to the, the states page and find the lights bedroom, right? So we know that that's the actual um, entity name right there, lights bedroom, we'll copy that off. Right now the friendly name is bedroom, right? So we saw that right here, bedroom. Um, so we'll go back to our YAML file and make sure that you're justified right. So you gotta go back the two, bedroom.lights, colon. If you don't put the colon, it will fail. Space, space, F-R-I-E-N-D-L-Y, name, colon, and we will put sleep room. I don't know, you can be as creative as you want. But we save that, we go back, we check our configuration. And right now it seems kind of silly to keep checking our configuration. But once we get a little bit more complicated, you'll see that it's, it's worth it. Um, it. It'll save us time and energy um, in the future. All right, so once that happens and we're all good, everything's green, we restart the service, give it a second, and then we'll go back to the web page. We'll go back to the web page and we'll refresh. Oh, it'll take it a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll see now it says sleep room and it, it um, alphabetized them. So it put it down there, but you can see how easy it is to change the name and why you would want to do that, right? So you would want to do that because it just makes it easier for you. And presumably if you live with people and everything, you're, you're other users, right? So again, this is all about user interface and tying things together more than it is about the actual automation of walking into a room and having things happen automatically. Um, 
Because if you do live with people or have people over a lot that need to control things and they can't figure out how, they end up unplugging things and complaining and all of that and none of that's great. So um, do this. You wanna do one more? All right, let's do one more. Um, let's do, um, I don't know. Let's go to the entities and look for one. We'll go and we'll look for temperature. So right now the temperature is 48.6 degrees where I am. It's in Fahrenheit. The entity name is this. So we'll copy that out. We will go to um, our, our um, YAML configuration.yaml file, make sure we're justified correctly, colon space F-R-I-E-N-D-L-I underscore name. And then um, we'll do, um, I don't know, temp. And we will save that. And, and at the same time, what we'll do here is the bedroom light, just to show you what we can do, we'll make that hidden, right? So H-I-D-D um, hidden and then T-R-U-E, right? So hidden equals true. Um, we'll should hide the sleep room and should change that, uh, the, the temp, temperature to temp. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, we will go ahead and make sure that everything we have here is correct by checking our script. Give that a second. And then stop and start the service. Go back to the website and make sure we're all, uh, we're all good. We'll go back to states and you can see we're not quite there yet. Reload it. It takes it a second. And it taking a second is why some people just reload the configuration. I'm just in the habit of doing it this way. Um, you can do it however you want. You can see now that says temp instead of PWS underscore temperature or whatever it said before. And you can see sleep room is now hidden, right? We, we hid that. So it's a way to sort of control things as we go. Um, this is short, sweet, hope it helps. The next thing we are going to do is um, figure out how to put these things in groups and zones so that we can make more logical interfaces. Um, so that's our, our next one. All right, great, see you then. Uh, and in the meantime, keep automating, bye.